Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on IPv6 addressing. In IPv6 addressing, first thing is you should know how many bits are used in order to represent an IPv6 address. For IPv4, 32 bits are used. Hope you remember 32 bits are used in the IPv4 addressing scheme. Here, 128 bits. Just see the number 128. So, 2 to the power of 128 is a very huge number. That many IP addresses are possible in IPv6 addressing. In IPv4, 32 bits, 2 to the power of 32. So, we were about, like at least able to tell the number around 4 billion. But here, it is very difficult to tell even how many, what is the total amount here in, two to, in this particular addressing scheme, 2 to the power of 128. Only thing is we can say in comparison to this, it is 2 to the power of 96 times more than the IPv4. So, that many addresses are there in IPv6 addressing. Now, when you have to write about, uh, when you have to write one particular IP address in, in IPv6, uh, then you just see 128 bits, you have to write it in binary notation. There are different notations that are used here also in similar to the IPv4. In binary notation, what you are going to do is you are writing in terms of 1s and zeros only, isn't it? 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, like this. You will be writing what? All 128 bits. All these will be totally 128 bits in the binary. But for the purpose of study, to convey the information regarding an IPv6 address, it is difficult definitely to tell an address in the binary notation. So, this binary notation is always used in what? In the computers, in the machines, isn't it? But for us, for humans, we require the other type of notation only for communication purposes, for conveying the information and for the study purpose. That is the reason we go for a second type of notation that is used here in IPv6 and that is called as colon hexadecimal notation. colon hexadecimal notation. So, here I have written one example for the colon hexadecimal notation. You can see what you are doing is 128 bits, fine. 128 bits you are going to write it in terms of colon hexadecimal means the complete 128 you just divide it into 8 sections 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, isn't it? And each uh, hexadecimal number here represent how many? 4 bits. So, in each section you have how many? 16. 16 bits, isn't it? 16 bits is how much? 2 bytes. Here you have 2 bytes. Fine. So, totally it will be what? 8 sections are there. 8 into 2. 16 bytes are here. So, the representation is called as colon hexadecimal. You are going to write it in the hexa uh, using the hexadecimal numbers separated by colon for each section. So, totally it will be 8 sections. This is how you are going to Alright, one example I have shown here. Now, this hexadecimal notation is also quite lengthy to communicate or to make use for our study purposes. For that reason, we can always compress this. But for compressing, we have certain rules. Always see that if any particular section is having consecutive zeros, you can reduce it to one single zero. If any section is having what prefixes with zeros, you can reduce it to one zero. So, that way if you want to do this comp. Uh, to compress this particular number, you can write down FDEC colon. For all these four zeros, you are just writing it as one single zero. Then this colon is appearing, no? That you can write down. Then for all these four, you are writing it as one zero. Then this colon, then zero, then this zero, then this colon. Here you can see these three zeros can be compressed into one and you can write just one zero and followed by F. For these kind of numbers, you cannot compress even though you are having so do not make a mistake of writing one single B. It is 2B, FF, FF, F, F. So, finally, what no such a huge number is now reduced to this much. And one more possibility is also there. Suppose if there are consecutive sections with zeros, then you can make use of double colon. Okay, double colon is what? One colon followed by another colon. So, how to make use of this double colon for the same example, I will show you. Anyway, the first section you cannot compress, you write it as it is. Then you see, incidentally, you have here in this example, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 sections are there continuously with zeros only. So, what you can do is just place here double colon, okay. Then you start writing the remaining sections. Remaining sections are 0f colon 
बी बी एफ एफ कोलन एफ 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 सो दिस यू हैव रेड्यूज इट टू ओनली दिस मच नो हाउ टू एनलाइज और हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट दिस पर्टिक्युलर सेक्शन ए आई आई पी वी सिक्स एड्रेस इज यू जस्ट सी वन सेक्शन टू थ्री फोर टोटली इट हैज टू बी हाउ मेनी एट सेक्शन हियर यू आर हैविंग फोर सेक्शन नाउ वॉट एवर इज दिस डबल कोलन इन दिस इज हिडन वॉट द रिमेनिंग फोर सेक्शन एंड ऑल दिस फोर सेक्शन आर कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ जीरोज ओनली सो वेन यू हैव टू सी दिस इज वॉट वी सेव यूर कॉम्प्रेसिंग इज इंट इट when when you have to expand so there can be some simple one or two mark questions wherein one single ipv6 address in hexadecimal notation will be given and you will be asked to what compress the given ipv6 address sometimes you will be asked to what expand the ipv6 address expand if they give this particular okay number then you have to once again expand so at that time you just see whenever any section is having or whenever you see two colon that means that two colon consist of the remaining sections consisting of zeros in that ipv6 address so here 1 2 3 4 four sections are there the remaining four sections will be here these are the four sections so this way you can expand also so follow these rules for in order to do the compressing and expansion this is the second Th we have the third type of notation also possible wherein we say the notation is called as the mixed notation mixed notation when you use the word mixed that means you are using the hexadecimal notation combined with dotted decimal dotted decimal is in ipv4 and in dotted decimal you have how many bits 32 bits if it is 32 bits then how many sections you can write down with the dotted decimal one section is consisting of how many bits totally one number is of four bits so one section is consisting of 16 bits so two sections you have to make use, use uh, you have to write it in terms of ipv4 that is the dotted decimal notation one simple example just i will write down see any ipv6 address can begin with double colon also double colon i'll just write 192.168.2.13 now this is also a valid ipv6 address but it belongs to which type of notation mixed notation here colon double colon indicates what all remaining that is here this is these are the two sections the remaining six sections consisting of all zeros so you can write down in this manner also the mixed notation then you have the cidr notation fine in the cidr notation you are using the slash followed by the prefix number for example i'll just write down here one uh, fac2 something so this fac0 and this is one uh, ipv6 address if i am writing some hexadecimal number here uh, sorry one prefix value here for example just i am taking one example let me write 8 then that indicates what the prefix value now i'll be telling you regarding how this ipv6 address is divided into prefix and suffix part similar to ipv4 the complete 32 bit address is divided into two parts the suffix part and the prefix part here also you need to know what does this prefix means in ipv6 addressing so this is an example for cidr notation so finally you can tell that the ipv6 addressing can be uh, written in form in different notations binary colon hexadecimal notation mixed notation and cidr notation <coughs> classless interdomain routing notation see here i would like to tell that why we are going for ipv6 addressing because ipv4 addressing is resulting in shortage of addresses it is not just the human beings that are using the ip uh, addresses now presently the situation has become because of internet of things every device every appliances now at home also we are making a very smart home isn't it we want all the appliances that are present microwave oven whether it is a washing machine or whether it is an air condition all these devices we want to all these appliances we want to communicate make them communicate with each other so that's the reason every home requires multi many ip addresses in 10 to 12 ip addresses and each user is also trying to make use of more than one ip address isn't it so that's why ipv4 uh, addresses that are present in ipv4 are not sufficient go for the ipv6 this will definitely last for years to come the range is yeah sorry the number is very huge 2 to the power of 128 that many addresses are possible so that's the reason sys migrating from ipv4 to ipv6 and 
once again now uh, just try to see the topics that are that you have studied in ipv4 same manner you are going to learn for ipv6 there in ipv4 you have studied two classifications classless addressing and class full addressing and uh, if you remember you have done uh, the complete ipv4 addresses or the address space divided into different classes class a class b class c class d and class c here for the complete addresses in ipv6 that is the address space allocation is in this manner how many blocks are used 1 2 3 4 here you are not going to use the word class you will be using what the blocks so totally you have it, it is divided into five blocks and the names for the blocks are special addresses global unicast unique local unicast link local addresses and multicast addresses these are the five blocks and you can see how much that is how much percentage of addresses are allocated in each block the largest block is this one global unicast one eighth of ipv6 addresses belong to this block and you should also know what is written here in the different columns first one is the block prefix any ipv4 ipv6 address starting with eight zeros okay eight zeros is comes under special address okay under the category or under the block special addresses and the cidr notation is always what in this way slash 8 first 8 bits are always zeros okay and any ipv6 address that begins with 001 this should be the three bits starting bits then it is a global unicast address it comes under this category and this is the cidr notation for the second block and the third block is called as the unique local uh, unicast address and the starting bits are 1111110 these are the seven bits okay if any seven bits are in this pattern then it becomes this block and this is the cidr notation fine then the fourth block is what 11111111110 that is the first 10 bits of an ipv6 are if it is like this then it is a link local address and the cidr notation is given here and you have the last block here and definitely multicasting is definitely required in ipv4 you had the complete block that is class d class d is completely meant for multicast addresses here this block is for the multicast address and the starting 8 bit should always begin with one here and this is the cidr notation so these are the what the fraction of addresses that are assigned under each block so this is all about the representation uh, of an ipv6 address and the different blocks that are there in the ipv6 address so in my next video lecture i shall explain in detail about the see this is the main block here you will al always be using an ipv6 address belonging to this global unicast address okay this is a huge block one eighth of ipv6 addresses uh, comes under this block so in detail you are going to learn about first the global unicast ipv6 address so that is what i have decided in my next video session i shall be explaining you about the global unicast because uh, just learning about ipv6 completely 188 bits are there in ipv6 that we all know but what about the suffix and the prefix part in an ipv6 that also you need to know isn't it so that's why the next topic will make these doubts very clear about the prefix and the suffix part of the ipv6 hope the explanation is clear to you all thank you take care bye bye